Oh my God, you guys, I'm a doctor now. <laughs> I can't wait to make everyone wait at least one hour to see me. I'm booked. I'm, what's your copay? I'm going to start using that a lot. Thank you so much uh, for the video and the introductory remarks. And I'm just, I could not be more proud to be here. Uh, President Wallace, SCAD students, faculty, family, and friends, thank you so much for allowing me to be here and celebrate your achievement with you today and honoring me with this remarkable degree. I, I have to say it is always such a thrill to be associated with anything um, at SCAD. There is so much talent, there is so much enthusiasm and accomplishment and love that it's just, it's, we're so lucky to be here. So, but graduates, let me tell you something. Uh, 28 years ago, when I was in your shoes, uh, not literally, because I was wearing Doc Siders, uh, it was the 90s, and if I may quote Oprah, when you know better, you do better. But in the spring of 1991, with the ink still wet on my business management degree from Gettysburg College, I sat listening to the commencement address, one just like this, delivered by someone very similar to me, the brilliant Harvard psycholinguist Noam Chomsky. I have no idea what he said at all. So I thought I'd start by sharing some wisdom I thought you might actually remember 20 or 30 years from now. And it comes from someone very much like Noam Chomsky, a great sage of our times whose towering contributions to American culture have changed the course of history. I'm talking, of course, about Justin Bieber. who writes, and I quote, haters will say what they want, but their hate will never stop you from chasing your dreams. Who knew the Biebs? Thanks, Google. And I cannot tell you how much I believe that to be the most important advice I can offer you today. You fulfilled the requirements and earned a degree from SCAD, an incredible achievement on its own. But that is just half of the story. Now you get to live your passion, but, but how? I could tell you that my career was the result of careful planning, but I'd be totally lying. <laughs> the truth is, when I was your age, I didn't have a clue. I grew up in a small conservative town in Pennsylvania. We're talking horse-drawn carriage country, Amish adjacent, <laughs> butter churning in the distance. When I went to college, I chose one that my parents thought would be appropriate. I majored in business because it seemed like a solid bet. But can you imagine me as your accountant at H&R Block? <laughs> It'd be real bad. Also, I wasn't even out yet, but as soon as I found out that if you just follow the approved or acceptable path, you'll be making a huge mistake. Not a single successful person, not Oprah, not Jordan Peele, not Mark Zuckerberg, not Ralph Lauren, has ever done great things because they played it safe. I always dreamed really big, and I believed I could do something fun and creative and artistic and a little bit larger than life. But I didn't have that much of a vision because there weren't really any role models I thought were like me. I just had to wing it. And the crazy thing is, it worked. So what do I mean? Well, I'll tell you. My first job was at the National Equestrian Federation in Manhattan. And during that time, I was at the gym one day. I just liked the outfits. And uh, I was all decked out and head to toe in Ralph Lauren. Um, it was like the plaid track pants with a sweatshirt with a teddy bear holding a black watch plaid basketball. And then I was also holding the, bla the plaid basketball that you got from buying a gallon of safari fragrance. <laughs> anyway, I was there and a headhunter came up to me and she said, oh my God, you're so Ralph Lauren. And I said, I know, right? 
And the next thing I knew, I got a job at Ralph Lauren. It was just like the Devil Wears Prada, except people were really nice and they had animals embroidered on their corduroy pants. Then one day at work, someone said to me, did you hear that Bravo is doing this new reality show? And I had no idea what they were talking about. I, I thought Bravo was a nonstick cooking spray. But on a whim, I took the initiatives and called the producers and I, I had no idea how hard it's supposed to be to get on to, into television. I just picked up the phone and six weeks later, I was quitting my job and was going to be on a new TV show called Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. And all I could think of was, I wonder if they have dental insurance. <laughs> I had no idea how dramatically my life was about to change or how radically it would shift American culture. From a 2019 vantage point, you might not realize how different things were back then. In the early 90s, there was no gay NBA player, no gay marriage, really no gay TV shows, and nothing like Call Me By Your Name. Even Brokeback Mountain was still a decade away. Back then, I worried being gay would limit me professionally, as it did thousands of other people, or even if I found a job, I wouldn't be able to be my true self, which means kind of obnoxious. But virtually every good thing that has happened to me, writing some books, movies and television, a fashion line, all of my great friendships have come about because I was that crazy, funny, gay guy on Queer Eye. And that very thing that I thought was my Achilles heel turned out to be what I was celebrated for. Okay, so maybe happy accidents played a big role for me, but you already have an advantage I did not and that's an education from SCAD. I know from the students I've met and conversations I've had with faculty and President Wallace, just how demanding the last four years have been. Holding yourself to the standards SCAD set for you as a student will help you succeed as a professional. And that means going off the safe path. There's one important caveat to all of this. Fame and success and professional compliments are great but it's still just as important to be kind. Stay close to the people who know and love you. Chances are some of those very people are sitting with you here today. Look around you and remember, these are the people who will stand next to you when you get married. These are the people who will one day adore your children. They will cheer your successes and hold your hand when you grieve. So don't ever treat them with anything less than perfect kindness. And speaking of kindness, find ways to give back. Give of your time and your money to causes that mean something to you. When you are blessed with gifts, you have an obligation to share them. You'll be better for it, I promise. Now I have one final thought for you today. It's very easy to get caught up on focusing what's wrong with the world, but I still believe that stories like mine show there are endless possibilities out there. Who knows, maybe I'll still end up with Army Hammer. He's so tall. <laughs> I want you to believe that the world is an amazing place and that you, every single one of you, can make it better. So march out here today believing in the mysterious possibilities of the universe. Approach new challenges and adventures with grace and savvy. Use the tools SCAD has given you and make your own opportunities and know that you will succeed. Congratulations, and thank you so much for allowing me to be here today. I should say con congratulations on your schaduation, class of 2019. Here's to you.